Hello everybody, this is Chris Yancey with ProTech Services Group, back with another ProTech Tech Byte. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button and like this video if you want to see more content from ProTech. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next Tech Bytes video. Today I want to talk to you about 5 reasons to use Microsoft Teams instead of email. So I feel like the elephant in the room is email nowadays. Vast numbers of people and organizations use email internally as well as externally, and I suspect yours is, is similar. There's a huge benefit to utilizing Microsoft Teams internally, especially when it comes to working on different projects for all of your internal communication needs. So that's what we're here to discuss. Is, is five different ways that Teams is going to benefit us instead of bogging everything down in our email. Number one is the discussion is pervasive. So you currently have Office 365 and you've got the Teams client and it's like the hub of your Office 365 account. Everything that happens in your Office 365 environment can be accessed through Microsoft Teams. Microsoft's vision was that the tools uh, your company uses are neatly organized for the team as a set of tabs which will give you access to all the applications you need most. Team utilizes chat or conversations rather than sending emails back and forth internally. Uh, if there's a document or an attachment involved the entire team can view the document with a message and contribute to that conversation that's happened around that particular attachment. The files that are shared with the team are cataloged in one location if a change needs to be made to the file, you know, I can make that change and everyone instantly has access to the most updated document. I don't need to email out a second revised copy of the same file. If I have a meeting in Teams, the meetings can be recorded and held in Teams for later viewing by people that possibly missed the meeting. So now I don't have to be worried about someone being out of the loop because they were sick or on leave. None of this is even close to being possible in email. Your messages are an Outlook and they're an Outlook only. Your recorded meetings aren't in your email threads and your files are hard to spot unless you start digging through your email and find the message that it was attached to. Number two is it's focused and cognitively efficient. Your email inbox can be really a disaster of focus sometimes. Uh, typically you wade through a chronological list of messages needing to switch your brain back and forth between projects you might work on or previous conversations, company announcements, external messages. It can really be a mess sometimes. So all of that switching back and forth in your email probably doesn't yield the best version of you when it comes to replying to emails. Teams isn't going to reduce your workload, but by having the work already divided into channels, roughly based around a topic, you can reduce the need to switch your cognitive context. So the conversations, files, tasks, meetings for that project are all in one place. You can catch up all in one go and then move on to the next project or place. So rather than being all over the place in your, in your email inbox. Number three is keeping in the loop and sharing history. So I suggest to all of my colleagues at ProTech that as a group, they should make a pact not to use email internally, but instead start using Teams in a similar fashion. If you need to focus your message to one individual instead of the group, you can always have one-on-one -on -one private conversations and do what's called at mentioning them in the team. However, the conversations are also there for the rest of your team to view, to like, to contribute to. Introducing a new member to the team, if you've onboarded someone new to the company, means they instantly have access to everything that has happened rather than someone having to take the time out and sit with them and catch them up to speed on the latest project or on company policies. All of the previous conversations, files that have been shared and revised, all the meetings that have taken place around a project are all there at that new employee's disposal all in one place. In, in email, this is really hit and miss. There's a history of conversations that are preserved, true enough, but the discipline to keep those you know, groups CC'd on messages really doesn't happen all the time. Uh, your conversations kind of fracture and spread between personal and group messages. And I'm sure we've all helped bring somebody up to speed that was new by forwarding them a bunch of previous emails. And I doubt that's really giving them the jump start that they could have had if they had access to all those files in Teams. All the conversations, all the meetings, just a full context and history that teams can provide. Number four, 
Team files are all in one place and really make sense. So how often have you worked with attachments to emails, opened them, had to make revisions, and then email them yet again, yet another version of them back out to everybody? I mean, have you ever been confused about which version is the correct one or the most updated one? So it's clear that sharing files via email isn't the most efficient way to do this. Versions get confusing, comments need to be merged, and it's, it's just generally ugly. So the solution of storing that file locally on your computer isn't really all that much better. If your computer is lost, stolen, damaged, corrupted, you know, what happens to your files now? You know, Teams takes care of that for you, and to me it's just a lot simpler. If I attach a file to a post, it's copied into the Teams files, no ambiguity, no confusion. Hey, I shared this file with the team, that means everybody knows where the file can be found, and it's always going to be the most updated version. Teams keeps up with version history for you, meaning there's no more emailing revised documents back and forth. So now if I want to see what a previous version looked like or even revert back to one, it's right there for me without digging back through countless emails. The team can access files from any computer, not just their work computer. So if they're away from the office, they still have access to the files that they need so they can be productive from wherever they are. All they need is an internet connection. So Teams can also be utilized on a variety of devices, whether they're laptops, phones, tablets, and they also work across different platforms, whether it's iOS or PC. Number five, it's all your conversations. So, so far you'll notice that I really haven't been talking a lot about Teams as a real-time chat tool. You know, although it can be used that way, it's entirely up to each member to decide how instantly they want to respond. Teams is entirely comfortable to use at any pace. You know, use it like your text messages on your phone instantly or with a team where different users speed of response is different. You know, as long as people reply to the thread, then there's one unified stream of conversation rather than countless different emails. Outlook tries to do the same. The conversations view rolls up messages based on their subject line. However, as soon as people are added to the conversation, side threads are created or someone else just uses the same subject line. It all falls into a mess of signature lines, disclaimers, and, and other inconsistencies. So email is not really built for project and group discussions. So keep in mind, Outlook isn't going anywhere. It really doesn't need to. I mean, it's seen some really cool and new collaboration tools over its 20 year life, but moving some of your conversations to Teams will reduce the time you spend triaging and responding to email and it will drive a more collaborative culture, especially when it comes to project discussions. Always remember if you need help with any of your Office 365 training or we can help with your 365 migration needs, contact Protect Services Group at psgi.net. My name is Chris Yancey and I'll see you next time with another Protect Tech Byte.